So our first reading today is one of those, I think, really inspirational readings when it comes to courage, when it comes to mission, uh, when it comes to rejection, and how the apostles react. Uh, Paul and Barnabas there. So just to set the scene, like some Jews arrive from Antioch and and Iconium state, that's the the top right-hand side of the Mediterranean, up there where Antioch is, uh, and turned the people against the apostles. They stoned Paul, dragged him out of the town, thinking he was dead. The disciples came crowding around him, but as he did so, as they did so, he stood up. Right, so we're not familiar with stonings really here in Ireland anymore. Um, you lob stones at someone until they're dead. It's it's kind of brutal. It's a, it's a rotten. I mean, it's a. Ugh. I mean, it's 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 an awful thing to be part of and to even to witness. I mean, to someone to someone kind of getting beaten to a pulp with rocks, not very nice. <clears throat> so what does Paul do? Well, he stands up after that. And he goes back into the town where they just stoned him. I love that man. He, he's amazing. Okay, so uh, the next day they, they, they leave, they head off to Derby, then they do a, a bit of a tour, but they, but they come back. They come back to Antioch and preach there again. You know, like the, 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 the love of these men that they would be willing to risk their lives having been stoned there, having been hurt there, having been rejected there. So imagine, like, it's not that they were wrong, it's not that their preaching lacked anything. Even though they were on the side of truth and the side of right, it didn't mean that they were immediately successful. Okay, so this will also be the case with us. Um, <clears throat> just because we have the truth of our faith doesn't mean everyone that we, we speak to is going to accept it with open arms. Just because you as a parent uh, get get things right, hopefully. Um, you practice your faith, you pray for your kids. It doesn't mean necessarily that uh, your kids will follow, your children will follow. In time, again, we've, we've mentioned this before, in time we, we, do, we, we do believe that the Lord, good Lord will, will hear every single one of our prayers and will collect every single one of your tears. Uh, but, yeah, it's, it's not quite as simple as if you get it right, if you say the right thing, uh, if, you say, if you're on the, the side of truth and right, that everything will go well. Not necessarily, not necessarily. Uh, but we do entrust everyone, everyone to the Lord. So, uh, and then they, they just say, like, they give fresh heart to the to the uh, new converts, right? And they, they very frankly say, we will have to experience many hardships before we enter the kingdom of God. You know, it's, they're, they're, not, they're not sugarcoating our faith here at all. We'll have to go through many hardships before we enter heaven. Okay, so, and this not only doesn't turn people away, they're greatly successful in their preaching and teaching. Okay, so like the, the, the message that, that our faith also has, has along with it, yes, a message of joy, but also the fact that uh, it's not necessarily going to, it's not a prosperity gospel, it's not a popularity gospel, it's not a politically correct gospel. Uh, it actually works. It actually works to give the truth as it is, not everyone will listen to it. Absolutely not, no. But if you change the truth, then it's not worth giving anyway. It's not worth giving. Uh, it, 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 it is nothing if it's not the truth. So, and I, I often think of when, when Paul would have looked back on his life or when Peter would have looked back on his life, when the apostles would have looked back on their lives uh, and looked back to their years, in the case of the apostles, their years with the Lord, uh, and how often they got it wrong, you know, on the road, trying to debate with each other, who was the best, who's the, you know, who worked the most miracles here, uh, who is the greatest amongst them, and just all of these, uh, the, the, the Gospels are very frank about the fact that the apostles did not get it right, always, Peter especially. So they would look back, and then especially when it came to the, the Passion, uh, looking back at how, how they left the Lord when he needed them. So they would have seen their own inability and their own uh, limitedness, right? And yet now the Lord is using them for great things to build up his whole church. We in, in this particular county where, 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 where we're situated here in Ireland, uh, Waterford, it's famous for Waterford Crystal, right? Waterford Crystal. So it's a yoky thingy. They make thingy bobsies like this, right? So you get a big lump of molten glass, and then you cut it. 
right? You cut it by hand. And of course, the most expensive bits of Waterford crystal are handcrafted. So some fellow blew into this fair play to him. Um, that's some lungs. Now, anyway, so he blew into this and, 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 and then rolled it. And then with a holding it, somewhat like this, maybe somewhat more professionally, I don't know, uh, cuts it on a, a wheel, a kind of a grinder type thing. So if you look closely, the cuts aren't symmetrical. They're not even. They're not the same length. They're wrong. <laughs> and that's what makes it expensive. The mistakes are what make it expensive because that means that everyone is entirely unique. Even though you, you could have 10 on a shelf, they're all slightly different because they're all handmade and hand cut and therefore slightly wrong and therefore completely unique. And I think when God looks at us, I think that's kind of what he sees. He sees people that he has handcrafted who are unique and who have their flaws. And if anything, it's our kind of our differences, our, our almost inabilities that make us more unique and maybe even just a little bit more lovable. Uh, obviously, I'm not talking about sin. Sin, sin everyone should avoid. But our, our inabilities, our, our, Im, our what the world might call imperfections, these things aren't an obstacle to God. They're not an obstacle to God working great things through us, like the apostles. They're not an obstacle even to our own sanctity. Again, imperfections, not sins. Imperfections like uh, uh, you know, not being good at languages, being kind of awkward, not being able to sing. Um, I don't know. I, I won't look around. <laughs> people, people will get offended. So I'll just keep looking at that little spot on the carpet. Uh, so, yeah, whatever our, our imperfections are, you know, um, they're not an, an obstacle to the Lord changing us into, in, into saints if we want it. If we want it. It's these little, little long cuts, short cuts, imperfections, as I say, in the eyes of the world, that actually make us us. And the Lord can still use us. And what drives the apostles on and makes them such great witnesses isn't their amazing gifts. It isn't their amazing personas. I, just, I love that such a simple line from, from Acts the Apostles. We read it there a few weeks ago uh, from Peter where he sees this poor man begging and he says, gold and silver I have not, but what I have I give you. In the name of Jesus, get up. And that's it. Just that, that confidence in the Lord. There was no great homily there at all. Just really simple faith. In Jesus. Lord, I believe in you. Lord, I love you. Lord, I want to listen to you. Lord, I want to follow you. Lord, I want to do what you ask me to do, when you ask me to do it, and how you ask me to do it, for your greater glory. And that's it. What you give me, I pass on. What you don't give me, I don't need. I'm going to just keep it really simple. I mean, there, there, are, there are gifts I would love to have, but if I don't have them, I guess I don't need them. There are gifts maybe that I have and that I have to use for God's glory. Otherwise, I don't deserve them. Music or whatever it is, all these things that were given, were given these things for God's greater glory. If we use them for ourselves, then we don't deserve them. So whatever we have, it's all, it's all for God. Whatever we have, it's all from God. Whatever we have, it's all supposed to lead us to God. And then everything makes sense. So then gold and silver dancing ability, great rhetoric, 17 languages, I have not. But what I have, I give you. In the name of Jesus, be healed. In the name of Jesus, be freed. In the name of Jesus, receive this new heart, this courage to follow him, even though it's not always popular. And so we ask the Lord to renew our own faith today. And to, not, to, to help us, to heal us from this perfectionism or this idea that we have to be perfect in order to be useful. It's not true. We have to be willing. We have to be willing, not perfect. The Lord does not call the equipped. He equips the called. And the equipment you have is what you need. The equipment you don't have, you don't need it. 
and then we can we can walk on confidently that the Lord always provides for what we need and makes up for what we lack. So may the Lord today strengthen our own faith and strengthen our 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 resilience as missionaries. May he give us the words that we need. May he root the abilities we have that everything in us might glorify him. Amen.